Okay, so so this is a uh, uh, well, my uh, I guess some something I really made up. I'm really proud of. <laughs> so so I'm trying to uh, uh, instead of using the textbook uh, uh, material, I'm using some of my own material here. So uh, phylogeny is probably in, in my own view one of the most important concepts in biology. In fact, uh, the very the very reason we can use a mouse to study human is because of the, the evolution uh, background here, and that's based on phylogeny. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, that's how I study, uh, prepare for GRE, I guess. <laughs> when, when I see a word, I often look at the rules and then try to remember it. So, the fi this apparently had a Greek origin. Uh, uh, it means something like phylogeny means you, you, you based on the uh, people's tribal or group try to look at how how the people related that's phylogeny. Now we are talking about molecular phylogeny here. So instead of uh, using a pedigree, we using a DNA and protein sequences to try to describe the relationship among species. So. Uh, so, uh, in practice, phylogeny basically means trees. Now, the, here the trees is always bifurcating. So, you, you may make some philosophical arguments say, in reality, things shouldn't be bifurcating, but in phylogeny, if it's not bifurcating, I guess we cannot mathematically describe it. So, basically, the underlying mathematical model, model assuming everything is bifurcated. And well, if you really argue if there are three species, if you narrow down the time fine to a fine point smaller enough, it should be bifurcating. I mean if there are th three species uh there there'll be two events. That two events may happen very close to each other, can be considered one event, then in that case it's trifurcating. But if you look closer enough, that one event maybe can also separate into sub event. And maybe that's the case. So okay, that's but in any case the phylogeny is always bifurcating. Uh well a result, the perfect bi uh, phylogeny is always bifurcating. So in the, the funny thing is the trees phylogenic tree is all most most likely it's not the upwards. Usually we draw the downwards or sideways. So, uh, so in this case, human and chimpanzee will be uh, closer than gorilla, based on this tree. If that's the case. The, now, uh, when we draw the tree sideways, usually, yes. Uh, the vertical part actually does not counter the tree. It's only for uh, visualization. It's actually it's not part of the uh, distance we will count to, to measure the distance between species. And for example, for this tree, the dis distance between one and two will be the horizontal branch. If we add them up, that's the distance between one and two. And this vertical part it's just there for to make it more uh, uh, variable. Yeah. It's the vertical. If, if you want to present it in a different way, you can stretch one and two the vertically. It doesn't make any difference. So that generally the case. But of course, when you read the uh, the extra tree, you have to look at the legends below the figure. In, mo in most cases, that. That's the way, that's a convention, yeah. So, with, for the tree on the left and the tree on the right, do you see uh, what's the major difference there? Uh, actually, in, in this tree, one and two are siblings. In this on the right one and three, so those are a completely different topology. They are, those are not the same tree, mm -hmm. even though five is always out group. One, two, three, four on the left is 
one and two is one group, and one and three on the right hand is a group. So those actually, that's how we tell the topology, how the trees are different. Um, so I, I guess I also label some of the key point here. So okay, so basically, most of the time uh, the tree are bifurcate uh, are present horizontally uh, for phylogeny. Um, so so I'm I guess sooner or later I should use another example for <laughs> Ebola. <laughs> this still based on SARS. Yeah, I don't have the data for the Ebola yet. But uh, in 2003, uh, the, there's a SARS outbreak in the Far East. Uh, that's basically Hong Kong. Uh, so that's for the SARS viruses. Uh, the fatality rate actually is not as scary as Ebola. Ebola, right now, is, what's the rate? That's it. Someone, I, I suggest some of you to use that the, the final project. Then we all, you, you want to pick that? Okay. Make sure you put on the Google Doc, then it will be yours. <laughs> so, uh, so SARS is actually only have 10% of death rate. Uh, Ebola is probably much higher. So it turns out the, the we, we can look at the time event. So for this SARS event, it first occurred in the southeastern part of China. And the reason, and then there's one physician who is treating the patient. Apparently, uh, he doesn't even know he, he had a virus. So he traveled to Hong Kong for a meeting. And he stayed at the hotel. And oh, SARS is more dangerous than Ebola because it's airborne. So he stayed at the, the hotel, and the, and the guest at the same hotel will also uh, be, uh, uh, be spread with the virus. And those guests then, during the incubation time, or they, before they see any symptom, they will take the flight to other places. So that's the, well, of course, we reconstruct this backwards, right? But how do we know this? Yeah. Uh, people even figure out how this whole thing. Uh, so that's a hotel, and I guess a hey, that's the person. Uh, yeah, so that's the person come here, stay at the hotel, and those are the other people stay at the hotel. Uh, apparently, when when he was treated in the hospital, he actually spread the virus to t four more healthcare workers. <laughs> so it's highly contagious since it's airborne. So it's more 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 contagious than Ebola. I guess. And those are the rest of the cases spread out uh, by flight. And in in Vietnam, you you can see that one person spread it to thirty seven healthcare workers. So, yeah, I guess healthcare is quite a depend on what what do you do. <laughs> yeah, and the nurse is often the the, the most dangerous profession <laughs> in this. One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the irony is one of the one of the people is also work for WHO. He actually realized the case. The if I if I recall it correctly, the person who. Uh, was went to Vietnam. It actually the plane was diverted into Vietnam because the the the, the person on the flight actually worked on infectious disease, and he realized it's more serious. So the plane actually make an emergency landing at uh, Vietnam, uh, and that person actually passed away. So he know how serious, but he unfortunately at that time couldn't stop <laughs> himself. Yeah. Okay, so now how do we know this? Uh, in fact, that's the phylogeny. You can see you can see the flight. You can look at the time event. But how how do we know this? We can also isolate the virus, look at the sequence, and put a time on it. And we know the time, how those viruses are isolated. And we can construct the tree and then put a time stamp on it. That's actually how it looks like. So that's the original outbreak in southeastern China, and then Hong Kong. That Presumably, is the physician who traveled there, and then the rest of the cases are all uh, 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 derived more closer to this one and uh, closer to each other. 
so that's how we tell. So, so if the way we're reading this tree is, so we actually don't say the virus go from here to here. We we assuming there is an ancestral one. That's what this tree is telling you. So all these viruses are related to some ancestor here, and this ancestral can will derive this one and this one. The rest of the are all more close related. So this actually called a clade. They are so closely related, we call it a clade. And this entire clade seems to be uh, very close to this position. The virus isolated from that position. So that's one of the case. In fact, if you look at the most recent outbreak, like the Haitian uh, cholera outbreak, there's also a similar pattern there. And, and unfortunately for that one, uh, the rest of the derived uh, cholera uh, sequences are related uh, to uh, uh, Nepalese uh, UN uh, peacekeeper. And that's actually brought some more problems there. <laughs> so, so, so it's actually in in a cholera case, the all those uh, cholera bacteria isolated from ha ha from Haiti, they are related to a uh, strain in Asia. And the the way it is brought there is because of the Nepalese uh, UN peacekeeper was stationed there. So, so that brought some even more problems. <laughs> Okay, so that's how phylogeny is used here. So it's considered a, a very rigorous uh, scientific uh, evidence to, to, if you want to support some theory how things happen, that's the way, that's the way we do it. Yeah. Okay, so now how do we uh, generate a phylogeny from sequences? So I have four sequences. They're all the same. Right. Yeah, all the same. They, they are. They are all considered the ancestral sequences. But for anything happen over time, if you if we uh, uh, deep replicate from one generation to other generation, there will be random mutations happen. So, so I then uh, put some random changes in those sequences. So that's our ancestral sequences, and then there are some other changes there. How, how do we generate the tree from this? So we first do a pairwise comparison. So we compare the, the first one with, well, well in, in reality, you actually don't know which one is the ancestral. So you do, you compare all of them, right? So how do we compare all of them? We have to generate a, a table, put all the lines on the, all the samples on the rows and by column. And for each one, we put the, comparison result there. That's why we compare all of them. So it's basically we put in a gigantic table, put everything on the column, organize everything by column and by rows. So uh, of course, if we do this, and if we compare the same individual to itself, it doesn't make sense that they always be the same. It must be zero on the diagonal panel. Uh, on a diagonal direction, right? So, but if we compare anything off diagonal, that would be the pairwise comparison in, in one of the pair from the other sample. Then. So here we compare the first one with second, third, and fourth. And then we can count how many differences are there. This is probably most, uh, the simplest uh, way to, to calculate this, but it, it works, uh, at least for this example. So, Okay, so from the first to the second, I made two different, two changes. So here it should be two. First to the third, that's uh, three. First to the fourth, it's also three. Uh, am I making myself clear for this? Okay, good. So, and then we look at the second, right? See, now I compare the first to the second. If I compare the second to the first, that should be the same, right? So I don't have to do this part of the matrix. I only have to compare half of the, the table. The, 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 the table should be symmetric from here to here. So I don't I can to completely ignore the upper part, only focusing on the lower part. Yeah. So here I'm I'm looking at the well second to second that's zero. Second to third, how many differences is that? Uh 
second to third. That would be the same, right? So it should be two. Right. The L is three. Three? Is the L the second to third. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, there's another one. Third. Okay, that's a three. Thank you. Yeah, it's three. Oh, uh, the table also says three. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, well, hopefully the software doesn't make that different. <laughs> that, that, this kind of mistake. Okay. Uh, second to fourth. Okay, second to fourth. How many? It should be three. One, two, three. Yeah, I, okay, now I see three. Okay, thank you. So second and fourth, three, and third and fourth. It looks like the P here and the N here. Yeah, so so this two. So, and then, and what we have this table with this number. This number are called distance. So this will be called a distance matrix. This is basically a matrix. This is not the, uh, well, it's not moving matrix, not a matrix. It's, it's really the mathematical term matrix, I guess, yeah. So, and based on this matrix, we can generate a tree. So this, this, this approach is called distance matrix-based approach for phylogeny. It, it's basically uh, the same thing is in, in mathematics you call a uh, clustering. It's, that's the same uh, approach. Now, based on this distance, how do we generate a tree here? Uh, let's see. Well, let me use a different example. Uh, this time I use a real distance to, to generate a tree here. So those are the uh, travel distance between the four cities, uh, Nashville, Knoxville, Atlanta, Birmingham. And those are the time you travel between those cities. Uh, Atlanta to Birmingham, two and a half. Atlanta to Nashville, four hour. To Knoxville, four hour. Birmingham, Nashville, three hour. Those, those are the distance. And then we want to use the tree to describe these four cities. OK, so well, we can put Atlanta there. We have to put it up. Right, there, there will be four cities. We can just pick one, put it there. But which one should we pick next to Atlanta? Yeah, Birmingham, two and a half. That's the shortest one. Right. So, so this is something uh, called greedy approach. We we pick the short. We we pick uh, for the from. From the immediate step, the most reasonable one, the best option, and then once you move down, you pick another best option. So for from if we look at Atlanta, Birmingham is the best option. That should be Birmingham. Atlanta is the guy over here to the right. Yeah, Atlanta is here. I mean, on the on the the picture. Oh, Atlanta is here. So to Birmingham, it's two and a half hours. Yeah. Oh, that's because uh, you, 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 you don't go through Chattanooga for that two and a half. Uh, you, there, there's another way to go to. So why isn't a line drawn to those two instead of just being blank space? Like yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah I Birmingham. could. But this is a travel distance. I, I'm trying to. I guess I should. Let's go from next time. I should put another distance. Yeah. So, okay. um, maybe I should use a Google Map next time <laughs> to make like, it more clear. Like so, how it says Birmingham to Nashville is three hours. Like, I don't know how to determine that. Oh, uh, those distance are basically based on Google Map. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. not based on this one. Okay. Yeah, so... Okay, but you're assuming that you, you accept that distance, we can generate a tree. Right. So, now that... Whoops, is that... Now, the problem is, once you put Birmingham there, actually, the other two already decided. You see the point? If you... Atlanta, Birmingham, what's the other two here? It has to be Nashville, North We only have four choices here. So... What this means, 
you put uh, Atlanta there, there will be three choice. When, once Atlanta is there, there are three choice to put it here. But once the second choice there, the, the other two already decided. And this means how many possibilities for this tree? Yeah, we only have three possibility because the 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 I believe so. Yeah, you I mean, you can Google how many topology for a four node tree. You mean once you put Atlanta there, how many different combinations can you get from the three? Yeah, 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 yeah. But Atlanta has to be there, right? Right. Yeah. Six, uh, no, it's three without considering the three. three. Yeah. You can try. Uh, in fact, uh, oh, this is the why I brought Play-Doh here. And uh, as I promised, uh, some of you complain there's no fresh Play-Doh. <laughs> Play <laughs> I, I bought some fresh Play-Doh. <laughs> Where we can find it? You can actually try to figure out for four no Trying to figure out how many trees you can you can have for these four cities. Uh, well, basically, if you, you can try to work out for the four node tree, how many trees can you have? Does Atlanta have to stay number one? Doesn't have to be. Okay. Yeah. You, you can put Atlanta, the last one, the second one, third one. Actually, it really doesn't matter because all it matters, Atlanta will be on the tree. In fact, uh, uh, Alright, so that's how I'm going to use it on the next one you have two choices. The last one you have one that you want to fly those days to get them in that same time. Uh huh. Alright, so we have four choices, right? So as a uh, one probably you want like one one tree and then see how many different trees you can So the only thing remaining is not those. So what I'm saying is you have to multiply your possible choices. So this is a So for the four node tree, one of them, uh, four of them may be closer to each other, the other two going to be closer. So I'm going to use some label to put the notes there. Tree, if I flip Atlanta, Birmingham, that's actually in the same tree. Oh, I see. 
See the point? If I can also flip natural and nocturnal, that is, is also the same tree. Uh, I can even, even draw the tree like this. Uh, oh, I cannot draw that. I can draw the Atlanta here. And then I draw Birmingham here, Nashville here, and Knoxville here. This is actually is, is still the same tree with that one. You see the point? Yeah. Because natural, this is a pair. The other two, if you flip this back, that's also the same. See the point? So all, all it matters is just the, the, the wiring pattern. It really doesn't matter how I present a tree. But from the evolution point of view, those actually matters. Because from this tree, uh, from, from, from this pattern, we assume the ancestor is here. But if, if this, this tree, we are going to assume the ancestor is here, Atlanta will be the outer group. And uh, uh, Birmingham, both Birmingham and Nashua and Nocturne are derived from this ancestor. So it is not related to the other group? Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we consider Atlanta will be the outer group if you want to study these three cities. Yeah. But topologically, they are actually the same with that one. So these three, the, the one I draw on the board and that one, is actually the same. But uh, then see how many trees you can make. Because, right, so, so we say the pink is Atlanta. The pink has to be on this tree anyway. Right? So, so the pink has to be there anyway. Mm. So it doesn't, all it matters, since as soon as I put another here, it, the rest of you decide. And I only have three choices to put on the second one next to Atlanta. So if this, for a formal tree, you only have three possibilities. That's, that's the theory. You can, you can try yourself if you, you if you can make a, a, a false possibility you, you will really make a name in the science <laughs> so, yeah. okay and in fact uh, it, uh, one year some student uh, want I bring the Plato in the exam so they can figure out <laughs> So, so in the exam, I can give you, say, a different topology and ask you which two trees are the same, or, or I can flip down to which two trees are not the same, something like that. Yeah. Sure. This one? This one? Yeah. Okay. So, when comparing two and three, there's only two differences. Uh, two and three. Really? Three. Two and three here. Right. One, two, three. L, P, and N. What? Yeah, L. Right. See the L here? One, P, two, M, three. There are three differences here. Uh, yeah, basically, that's actually the, so for, for the Spellman sequence, the, the actual situation is much more complicated than this, but for this example, this is good enough to, to make, uh, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Actually, now, this this is a, a, a fun part of it at least. <laughs> uh, so so the question is which one is the closest the living relative to the giant panda? This was the big deal because uh, in 1985 uh, it's a nature paper. In, <laughs> in 1985, people still disagree. Some people say, I forgot the, well, at, at least the first person who actually generated the tree to describe this made it into a nature paper. Yeah. 
but today you will see you can't do this just click a button <laughs> so of course uh, I mean I, I provide the sequence to you but it's it's not big deal anymore so so if you in fact if you isolate uh, some sample in your own backyard in your dorm you, you can claim that's a mystery new species you, uh, you, you can sequence that and if you can prove that's a new species. <laughs> you can do that, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but now, uh, this. Let me see. So let me see whether. Oh yeah, it actually linked. So I I put all those the uh, giant panda uh, sequence. This must be mitochondria 16s uh, 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 DNA. So all I do, I'm going to uh, select all and copy paste, and then I go to the phylogeny friends. There's a there's a website for that, but this website only do uh, it's more easier to do non-protein coding genes because for protein coding genes you have to do it different way. So, so I just oops, no, this is not good enough. Uh, I select no this uh, how do I select all of the say select all no that's that don't matter. okay I'm going to uh, highlight all. Oh, this is uh, okay. Let's see what I I copy highlight everything here, and then go back to and then just paste the sequences there. Uh, there are some extra letters. Uh, hopefully, let's let me double check. I only copy paste the DNA sequence. Okay, so I basically put giant panda there. I put red panda there. I put the uh, spectacled bear. I put short faced bear. I put Asian sun bear, I put brown bear, I also put the Asian black bear. Okay, and then uh, I'll just submit. Uh, so it's first doing some alignment, uh, and then going to generate the phylogeny. Uh, they actually use something called muscle. It's here, here, preparing muscle alignment. Uh, they, they claim muscle is better than cluster. Yeah. And only for some sequence. In most, in most sequences, it doesn't make, make too much. Yeah. So. so. Oh, this is taking longer than I uh, thought. Uh, usually, it's much faster. <laughs> okay. But if you have your own laptop, uh, you can do this. I, I think I put the, the slides on the. Yeah, you can also do this. Uh, Oh, this is uh, so. How are you today? <laughs> Why do you do? Why do you? Some of your sisters are not here. Oh, they, they, oh. Oh, some of them went to Abercam. Oh no no, Abercam next week. Next week. Okay. Oh, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure 
those who are not here have perfectly good reasons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's moving. It's moving to the next step. Yeah. And the the server is actually in uh, France. So, well, you, it's actually quite amazing. We're actually using. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to to be honest, the the most of the uh, good bioinformatics software are written by the European uh, groups. Uh, in the, in the U.S., where the maybe because we have more money, we we more emphasize on experimental things. Yeah, and from from what I heard in the meeting, the European office joke, oh, we don't have money, so all we can do is write code. <laughs> so, <laughs> What? It took it well you will see. Uh hopefully that blinking does mean it is working. <laughs> yeah. Uh if you don't want to oh wait, it stopped. Yes. See uh uh and waiting to be launched. Uh If if you have the mega software installed on your own computer, if you download that, this should take just one second at the most on your own computer. Yeah. So. But even then, uh, you think about in 1985, this is Nature paper. Well, uh, you have to give them credit. I mean, we we are. Nineteen years later, doing this, <laughs> so technology had really moved along. So, <laughs> uh, in fact, when in 1985, I will bet they actually doing most of sequencing manually. Nowadays, we just send it uh, uh, to an instrument; everything will be run automatically. So, it's things really changed a lot. So. Finally, uh, let's see. Uh, this is actually, if you look at the tab here, this is actually is the procedure to how to generate a phylogenetic tree. So, if you need to first give it a sequence, then you align it, and after the alignment, some. Sometimes you have to remove the bad alignment, that's called curation blocking, and then you generate a phylogeny. But the phylogeny after it's generated is actually in the text format, in something called Newick format. And then we have to use a, a, a software to display that tree. So that's, that's what's called rendering here. So the software usually compute everything numerically and output in text format. It says finish. Okay, that's the tree we have. So, uh, well, uh, let's see whether we can save this tree. And in case my uh, web browser crashed, uh, output download text. Uh, how do I save the tree? Let me see. Right click on it, copy image. Okay. Then I go back to my PowerPoint. Uh, that's 
Oh, that's actually my own tree, but let me see whether I can... Uh... The tree should be this one. Let me see whether they are the same. Uh... Uh, can we verify the tree at the top and tree at the bottom are the same? So first look at the, the outer group. The outer group in my, in my tree is red panda. On the top, red panda is also the outer group. And then we let's look at the bifurcating pattern in all the rest of the tree. So at the bottom, there's a giant panda. Giant panda, basically, that's the uh, giant panda. Right? And the rest of it uh, will be other bears. So the closest one here, that's the here, short faced bear, spectacular bear. That's when more that's point A five. That's more closer to giant panda than the rest of it. This one is point nine A, so this is far further away. Brown bear, Asian bear, those are further away compared to the spectacular bear and short faced bear. But red panda is the out group. So red panda I I, I guess uh, the giant panda red panda are traditionally considered more close to each other, but based on this tree, red panda is actually not even in the group, it's outer group. So, which one is more closer to giant panda is a short-faced bear. But the question is, what's the closer the living relative? A short-faced bear is the bear we found from the uh, Alaska, it's actually a bear extinct almost 10,000 years ago. It actually makes sense. <laughs> Something <laughs> further <laughs> back in the time is more close to giant panda. So that's actually a dead bear. The spectacular bear is the the bear found in, in South America. And that's the closest living relative to giant panda. So the correct answer to the question I pose is the spectacular bear. Yes, based on this. Yeah. Point A five three is more closer to giant panda. Even though even though vertically they are put in there, the remember I told you the vertical doesn't count, it's just for visualization. In fact you can even flip the giant panda, put it up top. Yeah. But then what's the value by the line that's point seven? Yeah, but point seven is the distance here, right? That's not oh, the okay. yeah the point nine a then point seven so so that's not the if you add up the, the entire distance after point seven point a and plus this that's for giant panda okay. yeah so that's uh those so usually the branch are draw to scale uh -huh. you see longer the, the shorter branch here this way this bifurcating part is more closer to the giant uh, panda okay. right uh well. Of course, to the tip, that's the that's that's the full distance, but the closest one is actually short face bear. That's the closest one here. The next one is the spectacular bear, and then you see brown bear, Asian bear, here. Yeah. So so if you since the tree is draw from left to right, so the leftmost one is more closer to giant panda. So basically, uh, even though, uh, oh, I see. In my own tree, actually, I indeed flip the, the tree to make, to put the short face closer to the other but it really doesn't matter. The, the result is the same, but maybe if I present it this way, it's more intuitively making sense, or, yeah, more, more easy to understand, yeah. But it doesn't matter, it, they are the same tree, yeah. Okay, so. That's basically if if you found put some graphs there so <laughs> instead of scientific <laughs> okay, so oh, we actually did a twenty six years later, okay, gee. <laughs> so I defy that's right, yeah, this two thousand fourteen uh it's twenty eighty five twenty eight years later now it's i I think I did that slide <laughs> uh, or twenty nine almost 30 years now, yeah, 29 years now, yeah, so I should, I should uh, update my slides on this one, <laughs> gee, long, long time ago, <laughs> so, yeah, 
uh, actually, I, I prepared a, this, this slide uh, I prepared for my Spelman job interview. So <laughs> you see why I use so many Spelman stuff. <laughs> okay. I, uh, all right. So the basic lesson is the phonology is probably the most rigorous scientific evidence. If you want to prove your theory is right. And you found a phylogeny, that's a hard evidence people will find it hard to dispute. If you have a theory, you, you found a new species, you have a you found a phylogeny to prove your theory, people will just say, even though people don't like you, they have to uh, accept your <laughs> phylogeny. <laughs> that's basically it's one of the harder evidence you, you can one of the best evidence you can have in, in science. Yeah. Okay, so well, uh, in, in, from a different perspective, in science, is phylogeny actually is really not big deal. People know how to do that from the 60s, 50s, 70s. But why in, in biology we are start to using this? Is only because it start to we, uh, we we start to use it to describe species. We we can sequence the DNA. We can sequence the protein then it actually becomes useful. So the method itself is not big deal. If you can for existing method as long as you find a new topic to apply it, it's often a, also an interesting part. Uh, the, the other day I was reading a, a story uh, for my daughter. It said, you know, uh, in Dr. Seuss series, there's a series say a, a little girl with a flower glowing on top of her head. If you, if some of you maybe know this, uh, yeah, yeah, daisy with the flower, and in one of the pages, so so that little girl has this flower glue on her head, and then a doctor run to her and say, everybody stay away. I think this little girl can give me a research grant. <laughs> so that's actually make a very good point. If you find an interesting topic, <laughs> that's the <a> research. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> that's one of the Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> I, when I read it, I was like, yes, this really makes sense. You, you need to get a research grant. You have to get have something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Too bad that didn't happen to me. <laughs> okay, so that's that's for my introduction to phylogeny. Uh, uh...